Oi pessoal! Hi everyone! Um, wow! I'm in Brazil. I'm at the Greenpeace office. Office. Uh, come in and um, I'm really excited to let you all know what I'm doing here. Um, it's crazy. It's my first time in, in South America. It's my first time in Brazil. And I'm liking it very much. And um, I have a friend uh, that will be joining. I'll try to invite her. I'm so excited that she's got time to talk. So. I send an invitation. I'm at the Greenpeace office in Manaus. And there she is. Hello. Linda. Cool. <laughs> Schön, dich zu sehen. Ja. Funktioniert. Ja. Okay. Um, we will start talking in English. It's a little weird first because we're close friends and we know each other for a while now. <laughs> and normally we chat in German. But yeah. we try to make it uh, available for, for many of you. So, thanks for tuning in. Thank you. <laughs> Obrigado, Lisa, that you found the time to talk to me. Of course. <laughs> so, How are you uh, doing? I'm, I'm good. How are you? You're far away. Where are you? Uh, mm -hmm. I'm in Brazil. I'm <laughs> at the Greenpeace office in Manaus. And mm. I just came back from an amazing ex expedition. I'm a little tired. I was traveling I a imagine. lot yesterday. But I'm really happy. Really happy and really sad. And the... Uh, the Uh, at the same time because why sad oh you know i got to spend a lot of time like for the last two weeks with uh so many people that i didn't know before but we were living on a boat um, <laughs> uh yeah it was the first time me sleeping on a boat uh it was the first time sleeping in a hammock for two two weeks in a row and i have to say it's really cozy it's you really slept nice. the whole like every night in a hammock every night Wow. Every night, <laughs> yes. Uh, and it's, nice. it's amazing. I love it. Um, and it's also so nice because you're surrounded by the weather and you're like on a boat and you see like the, the trees and the country that you're going past and it's just really, really cozy when it starts raining and you're in your little hammock. Oh, yeah. <laughs> But let me show you first where I am right now. So, oh, yeah, please. Um, I'm in the Greenpeace office in Manaus. It's beautiful. Uh, they have like this little garden here where they have <laughs> some, several plants from Amazonia. So it's really Greenpeace like. Nice. And, and there you can see the office. People oh. working on campaigns <laughs> and stuff. And yeah, this is where they organize everything and send out invitations to people like me. Um, nice. Yes. And I'll take you to the balcony to, sh to prove that I'm oh, really. Yeah. In Uh, in Brazil, so this is Manaus. Wow, amazing! Is it very warm where you are? It is. It is quite warm. Yes. Uh, is, is it is, very know. humid? It looks very humid. It is too, but I have to yeah. say I like it. It's uh, it's my kind of weather. I really like it. And yesterday we had like lightning and thunder, and it's just Ooh. the weather is so so raw. It's the end of rain season at the moment. So there's a lot of water and still a lot of, of rain and thunder and um, well, I like it. Yeah, nice. I like it very Actually, much. we had we had some thunder yesterday too because it was really warm on Sunday, like yes. extremely warm in Berlin, and then on Monday it was uh, no. What day is today? <laughs> today is Tuesday, right? Yeah. So I on, on like Sunday. I, can't ask you that. Like, <laughs> I was I was on a boat for two and a half weeks and I was just like, <laughs> and it was also so nice because I didn't have to plan anything. There was like food the whole time um, and every day people were just telling me like, hey, do you want to join uh, this, these scientists? Do you want to meet this local community? Nice. I was just like, yes, 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 I'm going to do all of it. <laughs> um, and that was, that was really, really, really cool. Yeah. Sounds really nice. So what exactly are you doing there? Explain, please. Yeah, well, so uh, <laughs> it was quite spontaneous, I have to say. Greenpeace Brazil invited me a couple of weeks ago or maybe a month and asked me if I want to join this expedition. And of course I said, yes, because I have the time and I never went to Brazil before. I never went to South America. I heard 
like you, you have a picture in mind of the Amazon, right? It's like the biggest rainforest in the world. It's like this magical tropical place. And I definitely said like, I want to check this out. And um, they planned this expedition for a long time. I think it got delayed to, to, because of COVID. Mm-hmm. And they found an area um, which is called Manicure. So it has Manicure River. And mm-hmm. it's, um, they were, um, were doing, planning this expedition and inviting me to join them. And um, they brought scientists. So here in um, Manaus, you have INPA which is like an institute for biodiversity research stuff. They have, they have the Amazon just in front of the doorstep and they're doing research here. So they invited a lot of scientists to study this place because actually no one ever did. So it's crazy. There's like areas huge in the Amazon and we don't know anything about it. Like, crazy. you know, there have never been scientists studying like what species are there? What is this place made of? They mm-hmm. have an idea somehow or they... Like they see what the what, what it's like um, uh, just by like looking at satellite pictures and stuff. But they they had the chance to study this, so they were there, mm-hmm. and they have a local community, or still have, um, that that uh, wants to make this a preserved area so that they can live in it and live off the land. So I made uh, I met a lot of people that live within this country and um, and yeah kind of live within this nature and they want to preserve it to 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 live with it and keep it from uh, people that will do logging mining and just destroy the nature so Mm -hmm. it's really it's like they're yeah it's what they rely on to live so it was like these two um yeah how do you say um interests the scientists and the local community that that made it so interesting for greenpeace to get there and give give a spotlight to the local people that want to preserve the area and to the scientists that find out more about why it's worth protecting and what do we have there. And then a random guy like me <laughs> takes <laughs> pictures and up. enjoys all of it and <laughs> asks questions. And yes. So it sounds really, great. really good. That's so, ha- and the expedition, any... just this then, mm, is called yeah. uh, The Amazon We Need. The Amazon We Need. The Amazon We Need. Ah, That's the that makes expedition. a lot of sense. <laughs> yeah. Sounds really nice. And did you see, because you went to, to the Amazon, so you saw, like, you, you were there, and did you see, like, any cool animals? Oh, yes. Yes? I have to say, I, I think it's, like, I love animals, but it's, the, it's definitely like, the coolest thing to see them in their natural environment. Yeah. Uh, so the first thing uh, was uh, pink dolphins. It's crazy. Pink. You're, you're, pink dolphins, they're called boto, I guess. I, I think mm-hmm. I'm hoping. I'm getting mixed up <laughs> with all these words for animals, food, and it's, it's a lot to take in. But yeah. I think they're called boto, and uh, they're pink dolphins. So wow. uh, that was like. And you saw them. Thing. You saw them. And like... I saw them swimming like next wow. to our boat in the river. So That's cool. So cute. I saw pink dolphins. I saw a lot of different uh, birds, colorful ones, a lot of frogs, um, mm. reptiles, snakes. Uh, beautiful Ooh. snakes with uh, different, uh, different uh, color pattern and you never know like is it a really poisonous one or is it a <laughs> snake that pretends to be the poisonous one oh, and yeah. we have like we had scientists who you know just caught them with their hands and oh uh, because they know yeah. what's poisonous and what's not they, they know <laughs> they also know how to handle the yeah. pictures and study these animals it was, it was amazing to see uh, mm. i saw uh, so many butterflies I thought actually Aww. about becoming a butterfly photographer because Ooh, where we okay. were at, there were like so many, like they had butterflies of this size, bright blue. And wow. I took some really beautiful butterfly pictures. There will be some great butterfly content on my Instagram <laughs> in the next coming days. And um, I saw, um, I don't know, if, they're not crocodiles. I think they're alligators here, but we saw alligators. I different don't know, what's ones. What's the difference? Uh, mm. I don't know really either, but uh, like really <laughs> small ones, bigger ones, and sloths, so cute, when they're oh, like really, really slowly climbing oh. up trees. You saw um, a lot of animals. A, a wow. lot of animals, yes. Sounds really, really nice. You are really on an, ad- an adventure in, in Brazil. Hmm? Oh, yes. Yes, absolutely. And I have to say, like, because I don't know any Portuguese, mm. like, I'm learning phrases here and there. I don't yeah? Know can you say yeah. something? I'm sure everyone wants to hear something. <laughs> well, the, well, for starters, it's really good that you can just say oi for hello. 
Okay. And ciao. Well, goodbye. Ciao. So that's really, really? easy. Bye and ciao. Uh -huh. That's something you can go to. But then in the morning, you say bon dia. Uh, for going, for, for good night, you say bon noite. A lot of words <laughs> are really cute. Like nice. bon noite. Uh, or, or like for headphones, some people say phonichi. And <laughs> it's, it's always like, it's, it's, it's really cute. And uh, one of my favorite phrases for... Uh, for for saying good night is durma con me angels. Oh, it's really nice mean? what you can say, and it means uh, sleep with the angels. Oh, <laughs> I use that nice. a lot. When I had yeah, like you a really should. nice chat with the person, and then I went to bed and I said durma con me angels. Oh, that sounds really yeah. nice. Okay, yeah. it sounds like you're having a really good time. Uh, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. I was I like so privileged to 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 come here to get this invite. And then to meet all these amazing people, like the, 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 the country is beautiful and the Amazon region is amazing and breathtaking, just the scale yeah. of it and how, how green everything is and the animals and seeing all that. But it really, in the end, it comes down to the people, right? Wherever you go, um, it depends so yeah. much uh, if you feel comfortable with the people or not. And I have to say a huge thank you and obrigado to Greenpeace Brazil. Um, because they were just so kind and like helping me from the first moment I arrived here, showing me around, always translating and um, also like bringing me in contact with all the scientists and um, talking to them. And they were so passionate about their work. You know, it was really cool to have mm. people where you can ask like so many questions too. And I was on expedition with them in the forest and it's amazing, like they, they, they pick up a plant or a leaf and to you it looks like all the other million <laughs> leaves that are out there and they tell you why this is very special and how small animals live on this very leaf and what, what, what is happening there and it's very cute to see. And yeah. um, I, I went imagine. at night mm -hmm. in the, at night. In the, in the forest the... Really? Yes. with a scientist. Was it scary? It was a little scary, I have I to say, but also very chill. It's like a different... You slow down and you have like mm -hmm. your, your, your light on your, your head and uh, you all, it's just like you hear so much. And um, I would, if I would be there alone, I would get a panic Die. attack right away <laughs> <laughs> and run screaming around in the forest and step into the next snag. And, um, yeah. But to be with scientists that are just so calm, you know, and studying, you're out in the group and you're looking around. And, uh, that was pretty magical. It must yeah. be really different because like everything I've seen so far from the, like from, from rainforest and stuff is from documentaries and photographs, but being there by yourself or like yourself and seeing everything in real life and having like 3D all around like plants and it must be really, really like amazing to, to be there. I'm, I'm, re I'm kind of jealous, I have to say. But <laughs> yeah, the, it, it, it is amazing and it is wild, but also, um, like I was posting just yesterday a picture of me swimming in the Amazon, swimming in, in the river, and a lot of people go so right away, like, Whoa, can you do this? Be careful, yeah. what's there? And I was like that when I came here. And you have you're growing up with this image of the Amazon being this wild place that it is, yeah, but it's also like you don't get killed right away. You have to be mindful of what you're doing and where you're going, definitely. But it's not like that there is a poisonous, dangerous animal that wants to kill you, you know? Mm. It's still like, you still, you're the most dangerous one, the humans out there, definitely. And yeah, also and also you're with people who know, like, who know what's dangerous and what's not. And, like, yeah. you have guidance. I think if, absolutely. if you would be there all by yourself, it would be a bit dangerous, probably. <laughs> it would be, it would be, <laughs> absolutely. And, but I have to say, like, what Greenpeace Brazil is doing, like, I didn't know a lot before, before coming here. I just started working with Greenpeace a year ago or something. And, um, but I have so much respect and admiration for, mm. for all the people that are working here, and especially here in the Amazon. For years, for centuries, I met Paulo Adario, which is a legend here. He was one of the founder, I think, from Greenpeace Brazil. Oh, wow. um, so he's an old guy, very, very nice, with, a, with an open face, open heart. And he, he's a really good storyteller too. And um, so when I first came here to this office, they had like pictures of newspapers on the wall about stuff that he was doing and all the people that were wor working here. And I have a lot of respect for that. Mm -hmm. And um, I was walking with him through the forest and he was telling me stories about trees and how important they are and what you can do with the oil and how you, 
how you can w like work with nature and how beautiful it is. And you really feel he has a passion and he, he yeah. went a long way um, also here in the Amazon and, 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 and to fight for this and to, to, to make the people heard that are living within this forest, right? Indigenous yeah. communities, traditional communities that live and, um, within this beautiful nature. And it's also important to work with them to, to, to protect them and their, their, their environment that they live with and protect for all of us, basically, because we need it. We need the biodiversity. Mm -hmm. We need the, the, just the rainforest to, 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 to have a chance on this planet, battling the climate crisis. Yeah. Um, but you also met people from, like local people, right? Like yes. um, not only from Greenpeace, but also people who live no. in the Amazon. Yes, we met, uh, we met uh, loads of the people um, that live in, in, in Manikore River. That's the region where we went to. And mm. it, it, we couldn't have done with, without them. Like they were, you know, they know the place the best. So they were showing us around. They were driving boats, uh, getting us to trails. So they were actually like working with Greenpeace beforehand to open up trails in pristine oh, wow. forests where there was no one else before us. So it was really crazy to witness this. To think like, wow, we could be like the, really the first, the first people that are walking inside this forest. Mm. And that's insane. And they, sh they shared it with us. And they were so welcoming, so cute, I have to say. Um, yeah. And a lot of them knew dark, you know? <laughs> a lot of them really? Dark. <laughs> and you're going far into the forest, like, it took us three days on the boat to get there, uh, to get to the special river. And then another 10 hours. It's so big, the land, the land here. Another 10 hours in just Manikore River to go to the area where, where we would do research, where we would meet the local people. And um, it's so funny. They were, they were so cute and also kind of proud showing us this place. Yeah, of course. Know, to show this beauty. But yeah. it, it's such a big, like... It's so hard to imagine like the size of the forest if you're from Germany, <laughs> because like mm -hmm. our forest. I mean, we have forests and we have big forests, but I mean, as you can, I mean, you all like we had forests as a theme and dark. So I mean, we have yes. we have a forest, but like not a, at all this big. So it's it's crazy. I can't even imagine like going so, like so deep into a forest and like in, to places where no one has been before, no human has been before, or documented it at least so that's really exciting it's really exciting it's just so peaceful and powerful like the trees they are massive and uh, and you have these um what are they called veins liam mm -hmm. you know that are mm -hmm. growing With tarzan the trees, <laughs> like that. Yeah. And they are like just some of them are 50 years old and it's crazy to think like how long it took for this place to grow and stuff yeah. and when you walk on the ground it's really soft it's Ooh, like all really? the, it's like yeah, moss it's or yeah it's, yeah it's all the leaves it's it, it's it's biocomposing you know mm -hmm. all the leaves and the uh, and the dead uh, trees and everything that falls like it's it's just there and it composes so um and it's actually very interesting because the soil is not that rich you would think that a, a forest that grows like in, in this place must have like the soil underneath mm -hmm. must be really rich to create this but it's not it's not the case it's and most huh. of the times it's really like a, a sandy uh, um, underground that mm -hmm. is not that um, rich for, 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 for plantation or for things to grow on or something and it really just has this top layer of, of plants and, and, and leaves and everything that just f f fell down and composes and that's everything that gives like all the I don't know how to say it, like the, the good ingredients the tree, yeah, for, yeah. for the trees to grow so the roots are actually not going that deep and it oh. takes it takes so, so long for these trees to grow <clears throat> and for this environment to, to exist. So why actually there is like not really a way to, to do sustainable logging. Like mm -hmm. when you cut these trees, when you cut them down, uh, they'll be gone. We, mm. There's no time that's in, in which they can grow back. Like not in our generation, not in future generations. So everything we destroy is lost. It's and gone, that's, yeah. And, that's and it's a very really fragile system. system, right? Because everything goes hand in hand in a way. I imagine like that all the, I mean, what, what I know, I don't know much about the rainforest, but what I know is like that it's very, the, the, the levels of the trees is like very, in, like it's very fragile how everything works together, that every plant gives, ha, has enough light and 
enough water yes. and like how how it the whole ecosystem works basically and yeah absolutely it's gone, it's, it's gone. yeah and it's it, yeah absolutely and it's so diverse that's mm -hmm. the crazy thing like the amount of species the amount of the amount of i will post frog pictures because the scientists we, we work with they took beautiful pictures of like so many different frogs and i don't know mm -hmm. like in germany i don't know how many different species of frogs we have not that much <laughs> no i don't think so but uh, here like in this one area you find like 40 or something different frog species it's so diverse that we just don't know what is around. <clears throat> so when it comes to logging, people say uh, you, we can do sustainable logging by looking at how many trees of one species we have and then just control um, taking some of these trees out. But actually, okay. this, this, this would take so much research to really see what, are, what kind of trees do we have there. And it's work that cannot be done. So when they do logging, also sustainable logging, which isn't really sustainable, they just pick out trees that look alike, but you have to do, run a lot of tests mm. to really see are they like the same trees? Because there's so many different species yeah. and it's so complex, which is mm -hmm. beautiful. And there's so much stuff to still learn and to explore and to see and, and all that. But um, yeah, it's, it's, it's also really sad to think of like how many trees are being cut down right now actually, because it's the end of rain season and they're just left on the ground so that they catch fire more easily because when rain season's over, a lot of people want to gain land um, mm -hmm. to, no, to make money, to, to have agriculture and stuff. And uh, this was just like, uh, you probably have seen the, fi the fires in the last years. Mm -hmm. That's what, what I heard, like last things I heard about the Amazon was like pictures from space where you could actually see the fires. And it's really, it's like, it's, just, yeah, it, it made me really sad because walking and being in this forest was just so beautiful and magical and then learning from scientists how diverse everything is and how excited they are to to find out what is there and find new species and so it was incredible <clears throat> and and right now are there any laws that are protecting these areas or is it like what exact like what exactly are you trying to um work on with greenpeace like what's the main goal right now to protect it what's like the most accessible tool maybe to use I mean, I'm, I'm trying to understand all of this. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really just my opinion and what I'm learning and taking in so far. Greenpeace is really trying to um, help communicate and support uh, local communities that live there <clears throat> because it's important for them that they have it on paper the right to live and to use this land, right? Mm -hmm. Because sometimes it's, it's, it's difficult. And if, if it's not shown and really like... Um, politically proven that this is their land it's so easy for other people to come in and to just say hey no it's my land or or, or they, they have a lot of they a lot of threats they're a lot of hey take this money or um like leave or otherwise we'll make you leave and that's really strange so it's really important to work with the local communities and the <clears throat> community that we were working in they uh, they just did that but mm -hmm. it took like 16 years they were working wow. for 16 years to have it on paper that they are the legal citizens of this land and that they have the right to use it. And um, mm -hmm. it was kind of a historical moment, really cute. On the last days I was there, um, they were putting up signs in the forest <coughs> and that was stating that um, this land belongs to the community of Manikure River. And for mm -hmm. them, you could really feel, it was really heartwarming. You could really feel how much it means to them. And um, it's just, the land is so big and because communities, they live like, sometimes it's, it's, a, it's a big distance, you know? And um, for them to get together and to get behind this cause and to understand how to protect this land and how to make it official that, that they live there and that they have the right to use it and to protect it, um, it's not that easy. And for them, it took 16 years and it was so inspirational because the, also two women were leading this process. Then I was meeting them. I was chatting with them. Oh, and they were growing up in this area. You know, they have their families there. They have plantations of manioc. And, uh, and, and, and I was working with them, actually, uh, also carrying roots out of the ground and getting them out of the ground, Oof. manioc roots, and, and, and trying to get this um, um, really tasteful, uh, what is it? Uh, what, is, what is mir in English? It's kind uh, of um, flower. Flower. It's a kind of flower yeah. they produce from manioc. Yeah. 
and it's it's really tasteful and um so that's the stuff they do there within this nature and they've been doing it for a long time and they should have the right to to use the land yeah. and uh, when it's burned or cut down or the trees just like sold um they cannot live on this land anymore and they want to protect it but mm. they need yeah they need they need a spotlight they need it's important that we know that they are there doing this fight and give them a chance to to do this yeah. because it's important that they that they can and for me oh, sorry it's a long answer for this place <laughs> okay. it's like also it's so complicated and so much yeah. to learn also i didn't know all this before um mm -hmm. for me it's also very interesting and important what, what what can i do like i'm a german citizen i'm really just a guest here i got invited and i'm just listening and learning from mm -hmm. these local people from greenpeace from the scientists and um I mean, the the reason it's it's it it's important to understand why is the, the the rainforest cut down. People here don't cut it down because it's green. <laughs> they don't like green. Yeah. No, yeah. no, they love they love green. It's because of money, and money comes a lot from our consumption in Europe. So we import a lot of products that are directly connected to deforestation, mm -hmm. and um, we should be uh, we should be at least understand um, what what are the products that we import to Europe? What are the, where do they come from? And then decide, do we want that? Or do, do, do we not want that? Um, mm. So and what, what is interesting and also a reason why I'm here and why Greenpeace invited me here is because um, Europe and our, our ministers in Europe are coming together and will, will, will discuss in the next months um, a law that mm -hmm. has the potential to control this. So it will make like it, it, it will force um, uh, um, companies to make public and to, to let it com be controlled of, of what they import so that we know of. And then also to stop products that are connected to deforestation, with, with, uh, which gives us like as, as consumers in Europe a, a choice if we want it or not. And to have like, yeah, to, 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 to really uh, get the knowledge of what we are importing and what we're doing with our consumption, because right now we just don't really know, and um, and and you cannot really choose when you're gr doing grocery shopping or I don't know when you're um, doing something and, and buying if it's you don't really know if it's connected to deforestation or not. Mm. I mean, the best yeah. thing you can go is going vegan, of course, but mm. it, it, I think it's it's a huge topic and it's really important that we keep talking about it. And that we uh, look what our politi politicians um, are going to do. And there's a link in my bio, you can click on it. <laughs> Especially if you're from Germany, please sign the petition, inform yourself and read about it and see like how everything is connected. And yeah, I mean, that's the first thing really, just to listen to what is happening here and trying to understand how everything is connected and what we can do in, in Europe as to being German citizens to, to understand yeah. like how things change with our, with our consumption. Oh, oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this is what I'm learning right now. This is what I'm like. You learn a lot, I can tell. Yeah. Yes, so now I need some water. I, Wait, I need to take some water. Yeah, nice. Yeah, I, I, water, water, yeah, water. Nice. <laughs> yeah I, I can see. It's like it's so much information and so much input you're getting right now. <laughs> you need a drink. <laughs> like, yes. I mean, it's so it's so interesting and so complex at the same time, and it takes a long time, I think, to really get into the topic like properly. Like I can feel like I it's just like the surface that I'm scratching right now in all the information that I'm getting, and it's just so interesting, and I really want to learn more about it and to um, find out. I'm sure you can find more information on like all the Greenpeace websites about it because yes. I think now this is like the first step, like getting the attention, but then it's like the next steps is really like getting the deep information and like really uh, understanding the whole complex system of it. And it's not easy to understand probably like it's, it's, it's not, it's a huge thing and it's really a lot. And that's why it's like, so <laughs> not easy to solve, you know? If, no, absolutely. if it would be easy to solve, it would be it would be done already probably because it's it's just really important. Um, just a very different question, but I'm just interested because you were talking about like tasting you know, the roots. What did you eat in Brazil that you really like? Do you have like something that you oh, would taste it? 
Oh yeah, loads of different stuff. I have to say, I was also working like one day in the kitchen in the ship. Oh, nice! Um, which is super <laughs> cool because I, I like there are so many ingredients that I've never heard of, that I've never seen. And um, just to name one thing that I really like, and it's it, I think it's pretty local here in in Amazonia or or Manaus, even I don't know, is jambu or, or jambon. What's that? Jambu. Jambon. It's, jambon. Jambon. It's a, it's a really tasteful green plant. And I think it only grows here, and um, it's 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 got an interesting taste. You can have it in 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 soup or also in drinks. They do really nice cachaça with a jambu. Mm -hmm. So like the liquor you you take for caipirinhas. There are so yeah. many tasteful different different caipirinhas here. And fruits and version of fruits and stuff. It's nothing like uh, you, you you'll get a caipirinha in, in, in Germany. Um, you have to bring jambu, some over. <laughs> uh, I should. I should. Maybe cachaça de jambu because jambu is is like this uh, local plant and it um it numbs your mouth a little bit so it's like a really weird feeling it numbs your mouth and your lips and you don't know like oh what is it doing like what is but it what does it taste here? like mm, i don't know it's just um it's hard to i can't really describe it it's 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 it's, it's, it's a herb it's a herb ah, okay. yeah it's, it's a plant um okay <laughs> that's really tasteful and there's a lot of fish there's a lot fish. of fish here. Ah, yes, mm -hmm. and I, I wasn't thinking of that before. But of course, it makes sense. Like, there's so much water here in the region. Yeah. It's like, I think, 25%. Like, in whole Amazonia, it's like something about 25% of the worldwide fresh water uh, is here. And it's just like so much water within the rainforest, within the, within the rivers and stuff. And of course, they, they have a lot of fish. And mm. um, so there's a lot of fish. There's amazing fruits, of course. Um, yeah. and, and, and actually with manioc, with this, I think it's called manioc. I don't know if the root is also called yeah. manioc, but you do this flower. You can ask the people who are watching that are from Brazil. Maybe yeah. they can is it tell called, us. is the plant called manioc? Do you know <laughs> the, uh, the, the flower? <laughs> to make maybe sure someone, that... maybe they have questions too. I wonder if maybe we can see, I don't know if this, how this whole thing works with the, comments here i'm a bit like Ooh, i don't want to touch anything on my phone that i'm <laughs> scared that no i messed up the whole live stream. stream but maybe so, maybe if you guys have uh, like questions about his his trip to brazil and about the green peas thing and everything let us know yes manioca manioc manioc yes manioc um and it's really nice. And you can also, uh, in a different process, make it to tapioca. That's also okay. like, that, then it's really white. And uh, that you can make like a sort of pancakes. And they have the... Yeah, the tapioca. I know tapioca. I think that, yes. like, I know that, I, I think I tried tapioca in, in bubble tea before. I think you can have like these tapioca pearls. I'm not nice. sure. Okay, and there I are really some like questions. That. Okay, do you have one? Maybe... Oh, how does this... Ah, I'm so scared of this. I don't know. Do you know how to scroll? I don't know how to scroll the comments. Tapioca, okay. Okay. There was there were some questions, but I don't... I, I... How many languages do you both speak? <laughs> you can, you can go, like, go like to the bottom right, and there, there's this, this, this question mark, you see? And there you can look for questions if you don't want to answer. Ah! I unfortunately ah, I just nice. speak, I just just speak English and German, and a little bit of Portuguese, I mean, like a tiny little bit, ah. and a tiny <laughs> bit of Spanish. Spanish also have Spanish and, and Portuguese. They have some similarities. I speak English, German, and some French, but not really well. <laughs> I was yeah, better in school, but it it, of it was. There is. I'm trying to get back into it, but it's not, it's, it's a difficult language to learn, but I, yeah, I want to learn, learn more languages, but it's not easy. It takes a lot of time, but it takes course, a lot of time Spanish or will. will. Cool. Yeah. I think it's, it's helpful will. for me, especially being here right now to, to learn because I like, I need to, otherwise I cannot communicate. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Wait, let me see. Uh, Do you play any instruments? I brought my guitar. <laughs> I brought that was really? so cool. I, yes, I brought my guitar and also my travel guitar, a ukulele, and, and it was so cool. 
I have to say, we also like we wrote songs uh, in German, and they, yeah, I wrote one in German here yeah, and one in English and Portuguese with other nice. people together. We will post them in the upcoming days or share them. Um, and it was so nice sitting on the boat uh, all together after a long day of, of going Aww. into the forest and then together with, with the local people, with the scientists, with journalists, with, with all the ones from Greenpeace that were organizing it and just making music together, looking into the stars. The stars oh, were that amazing. Really nice. I saw so many shooting stars. And um, I have to say also Portuguese is just such a beautiful language. And it sounds yeah. so lovely. And um, they had a lot of songs that they were playing on my guitar in Portuguese and everyone was singing along. And that's really nice. I, I always love like how music is connecting because like I was, you know, I was playing mm -hmm. my song, my German song. Uh, I was playing Napoli and it's German and everyone still listens to it. I love knowledge. Napoli. And, and, and <laughs> can, like, yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing to see how music, I always say music is the language of us all. Uh, it and is. it's really true in a way, yes. I was yeah, also playing connecting. viola. Viola is a 10th string. I think it's got 10th strings. It's a really nice instrument from, uh, from Brazil. So it's really? And you learned instrument. it? Yes. Ah, oh, well, I played a is little bit. Is it like bit. a guitar? Or... It is like a guitar, but it has an open tuning. And always two strings are, um, have the same tuning. So it, 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 it has like a proper full sound. And, I was, wow. and, it, and it, it's an open tuning, so you can just like play anything and it sounds nice. But we had one scientist, <laughs> big shout out to Pedro, uh, who brought the viola and he's, he's playing beautifully. Yes, it's, it's like, it's a bit like Brazilian country music. But it's, it's lovely. I like it. Sounds it. really good. I, like I want to hear it. Bring it back to Berlin and then you can play for us. <laughs> play viola. Um, uh, do you... Did you eat acai? Acai? Acai, yes. I had acai which is also cool. Like I've tasted it before, but it tastes a little different here. Um, yeah, better it's... probably. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's really thick, this thick purple juice. Um, also, just all the juices are amazing. The maracuja, uh, acai. Um, it's, it's, it's so tasteful. Um, yes, I had acai. That was really nice. Okay. I'm just going to be the interviewer person now because I'm okay. really... Okay, someone asked... Um... Wait, where's the comment? Someone asked, what, what are you going to miss most uh, when you're back home? Oh, what am I going to miss out of Brazil? Um, hmm. I mean, I'm really fond of the food, I have to say. But, and the weather, too. I really like this weather here. I like the humidity. Even though I'm sweating a lot, it's okay. <laughs> Everyone's sweating. You know? It's just like, and then, yeah. then it rains again and you're wet. It's okay. But I have to say... Uh, I don't know. I really like the language and the people that I've met on, in the last three weeks. They were mm. all so kind and so loving. And uh, even though for me not being able to speak to Portuguese, you know, sometimes it's so cute when you just communicate with fingers and hands. And it's so <laughs> funny. Like a lot of people in your job, but everyone here uh, remembers the Seishi Un. This, the game, you know, do you remember? Are you a big football fan, Lisa? Do you remember the game Germany won oh. the World Cup in Brazil? And Germany won 7-1 to one against Brazil? It's, it's like the remember. first thing you hear everywhere, <laughs> everywhere. You're far oh, no. in, the, in the forest somewhere and your and locals show you this magical place. And the first like, thing when they you... hear you're, you're, you're Alemannian, you're, you're from you're, you're German, uh, the first thing they say is, and we need to we need to have a revenge and stuff it's, <laughs> it's like they are crazy about football so I okay but it was it was a crazy game it was crazy it was a crazy game it was a crazy yeah. game but i'm not bringing up this topic <laughs> everyone else does <laughs> it's so funny it's really funny um, no, I'm, I'm kind of gonna miss uh, the people and also how they how relaxed everyone was and still is when we like we had several times our our boats weren't working and we just had to stop somewhere in the forest and which was actually not too bad you know when your car breaks down in germany it's most of the time it's fucking freezing <laughs> it's winter and you're just standing there and waiting for the adiatse to arrive and it's it's really it's, yeah it's painful but there it was just so relaxed everyone was so calm and chill and then you could go for a swim and i was like wow it's really like it's it's, it's such a nice approach <laughs> it was like everyone's so relaxed 
<laughs> you know, in Germany, everyone has an opinion how to fix it, yeah. what to do, what's the current status, when is help coming, what are we doing? And then everyone was just so chill. Right. It's going to be all right. <laughs> I, I, really like, I really like the overall, overall vibe. Um, nice. Yeah, that I'm going to miss. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, okay, wait, let's see if we have more. Uh, it's hard to focus and read at the same time. <laughs> um, 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 um. Okay, so a lot of questions are which countries we want to visit in the future or like where we want to go. Or if we have been, some people ask if we've been to India before because we have a lot of I've never been people to India. watching. Have you been to India? India? No, I haven't. Have you? No, but I'd love to go for sure. Yeah, we should. I mean, yeah. I have to, I have to say, like, I, I, I didn't know that I was going to South America, that I would come to Brazil, like, mm -hmm. <laughs> a couple of weeks ago. It's crazy. And I'm really so thankful for this invitation and, and, and for being here. And I have to say, it's beautiful. It's so beautiful. And I met so many nice people on this trip, on this expedition, who a lot from Amazonia and the local people that, that, that live here. But also like a lot of people that came from Sao Paulo, from Rio de Janeiro, from the north of Brazil, from Brasilia. And it's, it's a huge country. It's mm -hmm. so huge. And also, I think, so diverse in terms of, of culture and, and food and, and all that. So I'm also really intrigued to, to spend more time here in Brazil and see the different places. And of course, travel more in South America. Um, I quite like it. <laughs> So yeah, it's, I, can. It's, 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 I mean, it's, it's huge. It's, it's You've only been to one yeah. country now, so there's yeah. a lot to see. It's a lot to see and a lot of beauty, I think. Yeah. Ah, it was like also because I'm always traveling to go surfing and I love the sea. I will, I will yeah. also like, I will. You I are like, busy. you're the person that I connect most to ocean and water yeah. and surfing and boats and everything. It's just, I think you need that sometimes, like waves and yes. the ocean. Yes. So. But like, if it wasn't for Greenpeace Brazil and for the invite to go on the expedition, the Amazon we need, I wouldn't probably have come here. And I have to say, it's magical. It's so beautiful to see. And also one thing that um, Paolo Adriano told me, um, the, the campaigner that has been working for 30 years for Greenpeace Brazil, he told me like, take it all in, see the beauty here. And it's, it's so important also for young activists, for people who, you know, just start caring so much about our planet, about the climate crisis, and who want to do something and change something. I think it's also really important to travel and to see the world, or even in Germany, to just go out, go, and go in the forest and take it all in and see these beautiful places. Because he said, like, you need to see and feel the beauty, because if you love it, you will fight for it. And uh, I was really inspired by that. And mm -hmm. I'm so thankful to be here that it's, it's such a gift, but it's, it's, it's important that we like see the nature, value the nature to, to, to fight for it, to protect it. Yeah. yeah. And it's even like the, it's, it's weird because even if like now it's, I mean, today is the first day of summer in, in Germany, but is it? Sp yeah, it is. Nice. but the, <laughs> the like yeah. spring even like seeing every year how how the nature comes back after the winter i think it's so fascinating seeing how the trees start getting green again and you can see little flowers coming up and like all these little things and it's you don't even have to leave berlin <laughs> like, yeah or like germany and it's it shows you how nature always like the, the force of nature in a way and how it comes back. And I think it's also very a help, like a hopeful thing to see, oh, especially yeah. after the hard burden winter that is like extremely gray and cold. So I really enjoy the spring here and now it's summer. Nice. It's really warm. Yeah. Good energy. Yes. Yes. yes <laughs> yeah. There's so much beauty to see and so much. Yeah. How alive it is. I really enjoy like seeing seeing animals in their natural environment. Makes yeah. me really happy, you know. It's it's uh, I don't know. It's just cute. It's life. Um, that's really really, really amazing. <laughs> nice. It's really nice to see you and to talk to you. So, yes. You know. Yeah, absolutely. I'm really happy that you, we can make it happen and that you yeah. had the time to talk to me and that you're in Germany right now. It's really crazy. What is what time is in, in Germany? Like it's, six hours. It's almost eight p.m. Almost eight. Yeah. Wow. So yeah, crazy. Yeah, we'll have lunch soon. 
<laughs> my, my day really just started. Yeah. No, yeah. I'm, yeah. yeah I'm really and every, thanks also. for everyone who was watching. I mean, now, oh, yes. you know, it's less, but it's still like a thousand people. That's a lot of people. So that's a lot of people. Thank you for And I'm so watching. happy that we, we got to share this and that we have shared. Like, I will post a lot in the upcoming days about what I'm experiencing still and what I have experienced in the last weeks. Because the crazy thing is, like, we try to have internet out there in the, in the middle of the Amazon. But you've probably heard about it, too. Um, there was a journalist gone missing and, um, and, and an activist who both worked with Greenpeace Brazil for a long time closely. And it's really dangerous for people to communicate about um, nature conservation here in Brazil. And that's really a shame because and they've been murdered. And um, it's dangerous to do this work. And I just feel like it's so important to communicate. Of course, it's difficult about what, what, what is happening and how our world is functioning. Um, but that people who, you know, are fighting for this or, and want to make indigenous communities, local communities heard and give them a voice and care about this place so much are in such great danger that it's really, really sad and sad to see. And it makes me even more happy that you took the time talking to me being here, that I had the chance to be here and that we hopefully understand a little bit what we in Europe can do but also like give, give a spotlight to all these people that do this hard work. Like I'm, I'm so thankful that I got the chance to be here and to be here with Greenpeace Brazil and see how they work and what amazing work they've been doing for years, for like 30 years or something. And, and even longer and how passionately people fight. I have a lot of respect and admiration for that. And um, I hope I will come back to see them all and see the local communities and stuff. Yeah. yeah, we're all learning and understanding, but it's, it's it's really nice being here, and I really enjoy it. And I really enjoy talking to you and sharing it with you. Yeah, I really like. Thank you for sharing all your experiences. Um, it's so interesting, and it's just it just shows how much there is to learn still, or to start learning too. And yeah, it's um, it's really nice to talk to you. And Aww. yeah. Hopefully see you soon. Enjoy yeah, the summer we'll... now that it's the first day of summer. Yes. Amazing. But like, you have to come back at some point. <laughs> I, I will you come back at some point. Okay. Yes. <laughs> but for now, I'm enjoying Brazil. That's okay. Enjoy it and take everything in and learn as much as you can and I share will. it with the world. I will. Yes. Obrigado. Thank you, Lisa. Yes. Thank you too. Thank you so much. I don't know how to Good leave. to see you. Uh, I think it's just the cross up uh, <laughs> up the top right. I will, I'm going to try. I will, I, will, I, will, I will do that. Uh, thank okay. you everyone for tuning in. Yes, uh, thank you so much. Um, enjoy nature. Uh, and thank you for your bio. support in general. I'm just, I'm just going to say that because we never really talk, you know, to the public. <laughs> but thank you so much for watching Dark all those years and for supporting us and we really appreciate it and we see it and we um yeah we're just really grateful that so many people love the show absolutely yeah. absolutely and it's crazy to see to like to travel to the other side of the world and people mm. you know recognize you for your work that is really amazing and we have to do a big shout out to oh, our yeah. uh, creators Bo and Jantje who are coming up with the next big show <laughs> it's going coming to Netflix soon have you watched yes. the trailer looks amazing of course ah! it looks so good it's gonna be really, really I'm so good, excited yeah, yeah. I'm, so, I'm so excited too yes. so please watch everyone I mean they, I'm sure they're gonna watch it so yes, but we're gonna watch will. it and then we can all be fans <laughs> yes yes I'm really looking forward to that until yes. then find out more about the Amazon we need uh, and Thank you for tuning in. Obrigado. Ciao, ciao. Ciao. Ciao, Lisa. Good to see you. <laughs>